The snail-eating beetle, Terraformer, is one of the more advanced and dangerous terraformers in the series. He first appears in Chapter 77 and stands out from the typical terraformers thanks to his intelligence, strategy, and combat skill. He stole the abilities of Raiden Bergsmuller through the usual means of terraformer evolution. This gave him the corrosive power of the snail-eating beetle, which lets him release an acidic mist that melts solid objects, including Akari's silk threads. The acid can also create smoke screens by melting the ground, making it hard for enemies to track his movements. He has mandible-like features, longer antenna, and wears a silk hakama. That clothing isn't just for show. In terraformer society, wearing a hakama means high intelligence and social rank. His gear also hides his leg movements and conceals his two weapons, a Sasumata-style weapon and a pistol, which is tied to him with silk so it doesn't fall in battle. This terraformer doesn't fight like a mindless brute. He acts more like a trained martial artist. In combat against Akari, he used fighting stances with no visible openings, targeted vital areas like the jaw, and even figured out Akari's silk thread tactics quickly. His leadership ability shows when he tells another terraformer to throw him straight at Akari. He's also willing to sacrifice himself to protect weaker allies, like when he faced Akari head-on to save the Parapanera type terraformer from certain death. The Orchid Mantis terraformer is one of the evolved terraformers that gained its powers from Zhang Ming Ming. Like other evolved types, it didn't just get stronger, it also became smarter and more tactical. This specific terraformer stands out with mantis-like antennae, sharp mandible projections, and folding raptorial arms that work like giant blades. It also wears a silk hakama, a sign of high intelligence and status among terraformers. It first appears in chapter 122 during the Annex Y arc. It tries to ambush Captain Shokichi Komachi, who had just wiped out a massive group of terraformers. The Orchid Mantis terraformer almost lands a sneak attack to decapitate him, but Joseph Gustav Newton steps in and slices off its arm with his sword. Right after that, Liu Yiwu finishes the job by injecting poison, killing the creature. After the fight, Joseph eats the mantis's severed arm and takes its hakama to cover himself, which is one of the more disturbing moments in the series. The Orchid Mantis Terraformer has deadly weapons. Its mantis claws can slice clean through human bodies. It also shares standard traits with other terraformers like enhanced strength, pain immunity, and likely flight though it wasn't seen flying in that battle. It also killed two unnamed pilots before being taken down. The Archer Fish Terraformer is one of the few long-range specialists among the Terraformers. It gained its powers from Marsha, a member of the Annex I crew, and it uses those powers to deadly effect. The main ability is Water Beam Projection. This Terraformer can shoot jets of water through a small hole in its palm with enough pressure and speed to pierce human bodies. These shots are accurate, fast, and lethal from a distance. To use this ability, it needs to take in large amounts of water. Physically, it looks like a regular terraformer, but its arms are different. They are covered in scales, have fins, and the palms have small nozzles for firing water. These changes make it easy to identify on sight. It first appears in Chapter 88 and immediately proves to be a serious threat. During its debut, it shoots Yaeko Yanasagawa in both thighs and damages the bow clone that was escaping with Michelle and Akari. It also later targets Joseph Gustav Newton, piercing his shoulder and arm. Joseph blocks a later shot with his sword. The archer fish terror Terraformer also helps kill a bow clone by repeatedly shooting it through the chest while it's standing on the Annex 1. At one point, it's even shown cleaning the inside of the spaceship using its water blasts, which is unusual for a terraformer. Multiple archer fish terraformers later appear as part of the large-scale terraformer assault against the Annex 1 crew. One of them starts the attack by shooting Jared Anderson in the throat. Another tries to stop the crew from boarding the rescue ship Frontier Spirit, but gets taken out by a bullet from Daniel Arthur Jr. These terraformers also play a role in the final stages of the Mars battle. Two of them stand beside the new leader Terraformer, along with others like the Honey Badger and Pain Top Cuttlefish types. They attack Liu Yiwu, hitting him with two water shots. He still manages to kill them, which surprises the others. One of them tries to shoot again, but is ordered to stand down by the leader. In the final moments, as a mysterious black sphere appears in the sky, one archer fish Terraformer is killed by a blast from a human spaceship. This leads to the leader calling for a retreat. The Bombardier Beetle, Terraformer, gained its powers from godly and first appears in chapter 12. Its main ability is generating a chemical explosion by combining hydrogen peroxide and hydroquinone in its palms. This creates a spray of superheated benzoquinone that explodes on contact. While that sounds dangerous, this terraformer doesn't use the ability very well. Its blasts are strong enough to pierce human armor, but far less destructive than Godly's original attacks. Physically, it wears a single silk arm ring on its left upper arm, which signals its rank. 
This puts it above basic terraformers, but at the bottom among the evolved types. Even some regular terraformers rank higher. This also fits how it behaves and fights. It isn't very strategic or deadly compared to others. It made basic plans like trying to destroy the squad's transformation drugs, but failed to follow through with anything useful. In fact, it was the first terraformer shown trying to escape a fight. During the Annex I arc, the Bombardier Beetle terraformer clings to the evacuation unit of Squad 1 during Plan Delta. It punches through the shuttle window to stop the crew from transforming. Shokichi Komachi restarts the shuttle briefly to throw it off, then steps out with Marcos and Keiji to fight. The terraformer flies back to the shuttle and rips open the roof, only to be captured by Sheila Levitt using a net launcher. Shokichi praises her, but during that moment, the terraformer blasts Sheila in the chest, mortally wounding her. Marcos, furious, uses the same net launcher to smash its head and kill it on the spot, while still in human form. Its only confirmed kill is Sheila. It had the chance to do more damage when the crew was caught off guard, but it failed. The Pahir Hinkus Infernalis Terraformer is a bulky high defense type that got its powers from Jaina Eisenstein. It first appears in Chapter 37 and is known for its incredible toughness. Its entire body, including its eyes, is protected by a hard shell that makes it extremely difficult to injure. On top of that, it has massive strength and decent speed, making it one of the tougher frontline fighters among the terraformers. Its body looks like a muscular sumo wrestler, and it wears a silk fundoshi with four sagari. This means it ranks lower in social status than other silk-wearing types like the silk moth terraformer. It doesn't show much emotion during combat and mostly sticks to the terraformer instinct to kill humans. One strange trait is its obsession with silkworms. Even in the middle of a fight, it's seen eating them, suggesting they play a role in its strength and speed. But there's a downside. Like other terraformers that consume too much animal protein, it loses the ability to fly. During the Annex I mission, it attacks Squad 1 alongside a silk moth terraformer and a group of 20 to 30 regular terraformers. In that first assault, it kills Kaiki Kono. It fights Shokichi Komachi, then takes on Marcos Garcia and Keiji Onizuka. Their attacks can't break through its armor. It then smashes the ground, dropping everyone into a pit it had prepared earlier. Inside that hole, after Marcos leaves to help others, Keiji continues the fight and eventually manages to kill it, though he takes heavy damage in the process. Later, another Pachirinkus Infernalis Terraformer appears on Earth. It comes out of the ocean near Harigimi Sealand in Hokkaido during a Terraformer invasion. It catches a seal and eats it while glaring down at the amusement park, showing that these evolved Terraformers can now act outside Mars and are adapting fast. The Diving Beetle Terraformer is an aquatic type evolved terraformer that stole the abilities of John Welthork. It first appears in Chapter 21. This terraformer is designed for underwater combat and movement. Its body has several features based on the diving beetle. It has sharp teeth, paddle-shaped legs for swimming, a sucker on its palm, and an oxygen mask-like organ for breathing underwater. Its wing covers have also evolved to store air, allowing it to stay submerged for long periods. It wears a silk arm ring on its right upper arm. This marks it as having a higher social status than the standard terraformers, though not as high as the ones wearing Hakama. It's still strong enough to act on its own alongside other evolved types. In the Annex I arc, the Diving Beetle Terraformer teams up with a group of Locust-type Terraformers to ambush and kidnap nearly the entire squad, leaving only Akari and Alex free. It tries to drown Michelle K. Davis while she's in her untransformed state. Despite being stronger than a normal terraformer, she can't escape on her own. The plan would have worked if Akari hadn't arrived in time to save her. During the struggle, Michelle also helps, although unintentionally, and the diving beetle terraformer ends up getting pulled out of the water and captured along with its ally. It has standard terraformer traits like pain resistance and brute strength, but its edge comes from mobility in water. It can also fly once it opens its wing covers, giving it decent versatility on land and in the air. However, it didn't get to show much of its full potential due to how quickly Akari turned the fight around. The Mole Cricket Terraformer is a burrowing specialist that took its powers from Yang Huan. It first appears in Chapter 47 and plays a key role in one of the Terraformer's surprise attacks. Physically, it looks bulkier than a regular Terraformer and has large claws on both its hands and feet. These claws, combined with its powerful arms, make it ideal for underground combat. It also wears a silk arm ring on its left upper arm, signaling that it ranks above standard Terraformers, but below high-ranking evolved types. During the Annex Y arc, it shows up as part of a coordinated ambush on Division 1. Right after a series of guided bomb attacks throw the unit into chaos, the Mole Cricket Terraformer bursts out of the ground alongside a Rainbow Stag Beetle, Terraformer, and several others. It uses its digging ability to move through soil at high speeds, treating the ground like water. This lets it travel undetected and strike from below, catching enemies off guard. Its claws aren't just for digging, they're strong enough to catch high-speed projectiles, as shown when it catches a ball thrown by Alex K. Stewart, whose strength is far beyond normal 
normal human limits. This makes the Mole Cricket Terraformer dangerous at close range and surprisingly capable of handling ranged attacks too. Like most terraformers, it can also fly after opening its wing covers, giving it full mobility on land, underground, and in the air. The Peacock Mantis Shrimp Terraformer is one of the deadliest. It was created after the Demon Dragonfly Terraformer stole Keiji Onizuka's severed arm, which had been enhanced with Peacock Mantis Shrimp DNA. That stolen arm was used to produce this version of the Terraformer, giving it the same shrimp-based powers as Keiji, but even more dangerous when combined with the natural strength of a Terraformer body. It made its debut in Chapter 142 and stood out right away. Unlike other Terraformers, it wore silk shorts instead of the usual skirts or nothing at all. That detail signals its high social rank, possibly close to the top leadership among the evolved terraformers. The Peacock Mantis Shrimp confronted the remaining Annex crew and fought KG in a one-on-one -on -one match. It overpowered him easily during their first round. Even though both had Mantis Shrimp traits, the terraformer's base physiology gave it a clear edge. Its punches were faster and heavier, and its durability was tough enough to scare even seasoned fighters like Marcos and Anastasia. For context, real Mantis Shrimp can punch at the speed of a bullet. Now apply that to a cockroach hybrid fighter, and you get a serious threat. KG eventually turned the tables by removing his weighted gear, which boosted his speed and reflexes. With help from Marcos and Anastasia, they finally managed to bring it down. The Rainbow Stag Beetle Terraformer is a dangerous cockroach hybrid that first shows up in Chapter 47. It gained its powers by stealing the abilities of Maria Viren. Its exoskeleton has an iridescent light-bending surface that helps it camouflage, especially when surrounded by fire or intense light. It made its first major move during the Annex I mission. After the Terraformers hit Squad 1 with homemade rocket attacks, this one used the chaos and smoke to sneak in. The shell helped it bend light and become hard to see. It then launched a surprise attack, killing one non-combatant and bad badly injuring Jared Anderson. While this was happening, a mole cricket terraformer and a swarm of regular terraformers also joined the assault. After that, it tried to wipe out the rest of the squad's evacuation team, but got intercepted by Akari Hizamaru. Akari's thread-based powers held it back long enough for Michelle to join in. Even though they tried to trap it using Akari's threads, its shell was not just reflective, it was also extremely tough. The terraformer managed to slip away using its light distortion again, but Michelle and Jared tracked it down and kept the fight going. The battle turned brutal. The terraformer traded blood blows with Michelle, even catching her in a bear hug to crush her. She survived by using blast ant chemicals, forcing them into its face and blowing up its head from the inside. That ended its rampage. The Silk Moth first shows up in Chapter 37 and stands out right away because of how different it looks. Unlike the usual terraformers, this one is covered in white fur and has moth-like antennae. It also wears a silk fundoshi with six sagaris, which marks it as having higher social status than some of the other bug-based terraformers like the Pachirincus infernalis type. Its powers come from Nanao Akita. Its main strength is its advanced hearing. Among all known terraformers, it has some of the best ears. It can detect sounds from far away, which gives it an edge when tracking enemies or responding to danger. But its biggest threat is its silk. The silk moth terraformer can produce strong, sticky threads. These threads aren't just for trapping people. They're strong enough to hold up both itself and Shikichi, and sticky enough to cling to rock and cave walls. It uses these threads in many ways. It can tie enemies down, build large structures, or manipulate terrain by pulling and redirecting rocks or enemy attacks. In combat, this makes it highly flexible. The silk gives it both offensive and defensive options, letting it move quickly in complex environments and trap people in ways they don't expect. Its use of silk is more advanced than just shooting webs. It handles the threads like tools. It can create barriers, block passageways, or turn debris into weapons by wrapping and swinging them around. The precision and strength it has with these threads make it one of the more technical fighters among the terraformers. While it doesn't have raw crushing power like some of the beetle types, its control over the field and ability to immobilize targets makes it just as deadly. The Steninek Terraformer gained its powers from Tejas Viji. It appears early in the manga during Chapter 12 and is one of the first terraformers to use advanced movement. It has small holes in its back that blast out gas like a jet engine. This lets it shoot forward at extreme speed and strike strike targets before they even react. It uses this speed to kill or injure enemies by surprise, often landing one-hit kills. In terms of rank, it wears silk arm rings on its left upper arm. This shows that it has a higher status than the bombardier type and shower room terraformers, but still ranks lower than the mole cricket type. Like other terraformers, it has the same built-in hatred for humans, but it also stands out as the first to show fear. Ivan Perepelkin's poisonous gas made it hallucinate showing that not all terraformers are fearless brutes. It panicked and lost control when the hallucinations kicked in. Its biggest appearance is during the Annex 1 arc in 2619 AD. 
When Plan Delta starts, the Stenian Terraformer goes after Squad 3. It kills Victor and rips off Sylvester Asimov's left arm. Then it kills Elena Parapilkina by using its speed to get past her defenses and tear her head off. During its second encounter with Asimov, it tries to hit him with a club but fails. Asimov reveals that he regenerated his arm using his Tasmanian King Crab powers and punches through the Terraformer's jaw before slamming it into the ground. Despite the damage, the Stenanai Terraformer doesn't back down. It rallies other Terraformers for a group attack. Its final moment comes when it faces Ivan Parapelkin. Ivan releases a gas that makes it hallucinate again. This time, it believes it has defeated the Russian squad and ripped off their heads. In reality, Asimov grabs it in a chokehold while it's distracted. It screams when the hallucinated heads start moving on their own. After Asimov lets go, the Terraformer tries to escape, but Ivan traps it in a net. The sumo wrestler type Terraformer is one of the most physically powerful variants. This terraformer developed an extremely muscular build after consuming large amounts of animal protein during its nymph stage. This mutation made it three times stronger, faster, and more agile than a regular terraformer. However, its massive size made it unable to fly. These types were bulkier than average and carried themselves with pride in their strength, but they showed little emotional depth beyond that. This variant debuted in Chapter 28. On the first night on Mars, one of them led a surprise attack on Squad 5 by using a stolen evacuation unit to ram Squad 5's vehicle into a pit. After Adolf Reinhardt destroyed the enemy's firearms with his electric ability, the sumo wrestler type ordered its underlings to attack. When Isabella R. Leon tried to stop it, the terraformer killed her instantly with a single punch that obliterated her upper body. It then charged at Adolf and managed to grab him in a bear hug, but Adolf stabbed its eyes and electrocuted it to death, though he was seriously injured in the process. Afterward, three more sumo wrestler type terraformers showed up with their leader and a regular terraformer. One of them carried a flag, which it later used used to shield the leader from Adolf's lightning charge throwing knives. But Adolf manipulated a lightning strike to hit the flagpole directly, killing the flag bearer and temporarily taking out the leader. The other two bulk terraformers were likely killed when Adolf's explosive implanted in his body went off. If you like this video, turn on the notification bell and subscribe for more.